hello, Jan uh, Martens. Thank you very much for joining us here. Um, we thought it would be a good idea to have uh, one of the choreographers who's in our programs this year with the Ballet Junior de Genève. Um, because uh, it, we've been rehearsing The Dog Days Are Over, uh, which is a piece by you. And I thought maybe I'd ask you a few questions um, about the work, about uh, you know, uh, your, your artistic life, etc. Um, maybe if we go back right back to the beginning, uh, explain a little bit, because it, if I look at how, um, how things went, um, you straight after your training or very quickly it seems that you had this will and to to actually choreograph and you did put put on pieces very very quickly on a professional level so how did that happen good great uh i'll tell you a bit about that so um i actually started dancing quite late and it was only when i was 17 like i'm belgian which i think is like a blessing uh, if you're a dancer or a choreographer in the sense that uh, you bump immediately into very good work. Like when I was 17, the first works I saw were by Anna Therese de Keersmaker, by Fabre, and it was really like a, a world opening up for me. So when I uh, decided to start dancing, I auditioned in a school in the Netherlands, uh, mm -hmm. Fontes Dance Academy. Uh, that's where I started dancing. But when I went to see uh, shows there in the Netherlands, I noticed a very drastic difference between Belgium and the Netherlands mm. in the sense that in the Netherlands, you really had this more uh, neoclassical vibe, like the big companies there yeah. are, are, are very neoclassical companies. And that was work that I didn't see myself in. So actually already while studying my first, second year, um, I thought like, oh yeah, maybe I will have to create my own uh, possibilities in the future. So that's why I started creating quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Also with this idea of, of that uh, everybody everybody has the possibility to communicate. And then um, after two years, I changed my education. I went to the Conservatory of Antwerp to, to finish my education there. Um, and then uh, it was really nice for me to return to the Belgian landscape and to start off there in combination with the Netherlands. Um, and then in, indeed, quite quickly, I started to make work. Uh, which often had to do with this underdog body, I would say, like away from the virtuous body, but okay. working with a dancer of 65, with a kid of 16. Um, uh, so atypical bodies that you wouldn't see so often on, on mm -hmm. dance stages. Um, that's a bit how it started off. You, you put a lot of um, craft into how you put your pieces together. So even if you are using like um, the more mundane, we could say, uh, gestures or, or ways of being on stage or people interacting with each other. It seems to me that then underneath that, there's like this, this really strict um, process uh, that, that makes it into a work rather than just people hanging around, obviously. For sure. There is indeed, uh, as, as I said, like there was this in the beginning of my career, if I can call it like that, like there was this need to... Um, to get away from virtuosity, but mm -hmm. actually I didn't get away of virtuosity. I kind of uh, created a different kind of virtuosity. As you can mm -hmm. see in Dog Days, yeah, it's yeah. super skilled. The, yes. the, you, you need skills to be able to do this work, uh, but it's different skills than maybe our uh, even dancers think of when they go to school, like, mm -hmm. oh, this is skills I will need to, to, mm -hmm. to perform in the field to become a professional dancer. Yeah. Which leads me to a good thing about the dog days are over, and um, I know the whole thing apparently started with um, uh, an American photographer uh, called Philip Hulsman, um, and he, I think he photographed a lot of people jumping, and what, how on earth do you start with a notion like that and then make that into dog days, which is like, uh, what, the original piece is an hour and 10, 20 minutes? Yeah, an hour and 10. So it's a big yeah. full evening piece. Yes, indeed. Well, it, uh, it started with an invitation of dance ateliers in Rotterdam, which is a, a place for dance development, who each year collaborate with Connie Janssen Dance, which yes. is a company in Rotterdam. And they always invite, uh, each year they invite three young choreographers to make work on the dancers of um, Connie Janssen. Mm -hmm. um, and, but a short work. And then I made like a first um, sketch of Dog Days Are Over, but it only lasted 15 minutes. 
Um, but the idea there was already indeed this, this quote of Philip Halsman. Um, if you ask a person to jump, um, the real person appears because the mask falls. He says, mm -hmm. like, I have people who are, who are used to pose. They're a little bit surprised and they let go of their mask when they mm. jump. And therefore, I uh, succeed in, in capturing the real human being. And I found that um, an interesting notion with, with dancers, in, in which very often is the case that we have to uh, not show the effort, that we have to yeah, make it look like everything is super easy and super simple, while it demands so much skill and training and years of, of dedicated work. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that I found it interesting, like, ah, how would, it, how would it be that would also the human behind the dancer appear if through the act of jumping. That mm -hmm. was the, the beginning notion of, of Dog Days. And then I felt with this first version of 15 minutes, like, yeah, I, I reached somewhere, I, I got somewhere, but immediately the idea was born to make a, f a full length. And then the year after, I think the, the good thing with Dog Days was I knew on forehand because of this pre-study where I wanted to go. So I could also really, uh, on the audition call, for example, I could really clearly state I'm looking for dancers who are looking for a physical challenge, who like counting, uh, yeah. who have uh, jump-proof shins, also important because, you know, like if you yeah. have easy shin splints, it's shin. quite yep. a problematic piece. So, so in that sense, I felt people coming to the audition were prepared. I even could add like a small video of the, of the pre-study. So they were like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, this is going to be it. Um, but then, of course, um, when you start the creation, there was also no idea of me like, ah, is, gonna, is this going to be like a 15-minute piece? Is this going to be a two-hour piece? So it was actually gradually growing, gradually constructing, um, uh, really working the stamina in the beginning. Mm. Um, and a lot of communication between me and the dancers, thinking like, okay, uh, guys, we are now at 40 minutes and I feel it's going well. But I also feel we could go a bit further. Am I am I right or not? Or or for specific scenes, specific phrases like okay, in the phrase we do it like the big jumps. Mm -hmm. um, at a certain moment we did them three times in a row. But then I was asking them like, ah, could we also do it seven? And they were like, ah, I don't know. But then we try and then we get into seven and then we agree. Okay, it will be seven. It will not be twelve because that's too much. But mm -hmm. seven is 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 great. Um, so that's how it got constructed. Um, um, I, yeah, I also felt like really this uh, physicality is really something which transcends to an audience. Mm -hmm. This repetition, like like when we were touring, I also saw the audience sometimes jumping up and down. Yeah. yeah. So that was feeling like, like uh, also I wanted to work with that. So you really get this feeling yourself of this repetition. Um, yeah, and 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 very simple like for the first section which is only with the front back jump mm -hmm. uh, with no variations yet there i had the system of of making drawings with eight dots different patterns in floor in, in on the floor and then making an order of these drawings um and then deciding with the dancers okay how many jumps do we need to go from one picture a okay. line to the circle and that we would and that would be that would be the way that that first section would be drafted. Um, and then there is this phrase which comes in after 20 minutes or 25 minutes, which I constructed mm -hmm. um, to give them idea like, okay, these are basic phrases of two, three or four or five counts. Um, and then later we would construct own material um, in which I would ask them to create a mm. uh, little phrase of three or four counts in a diff in a, uh, in a, rhythm uh, for example jump on one and two nothing on three four mm -hmm. um, so these rhythms would emerge and there would come like a, a musical um, a minimal music composition mm -hmm. um, uh, by the sound of the of the jumping yeah which is very apparent when you watch the piece because the, the the sound of the uh, of the trainers on the ground and uh, they squeak and they, they they make noise and and the whole thing is super rhythmical actually yeah, yeah. absolutely um, which leads me to a question of when you came to us to restage this. Well, first of all, we were immensely happy to have a piece by you, 
But and then initially it was um, you'd clearly said, OK, I think I can, you know, I can reduce this to like a 25, 30 minute piece. I think that would do it justice, etc. So that's what we were expecting. And uh, as, a, as I watched you like uh, dro dropping into the rehearsal, <laughs> I suddenly thought this seems rather longer. And then there was an extra scene and then another and another. And you seem just to be building and building. And we ended up with a 15-minute piece, sometimes 55, which was amazing for the dancers and, and the audience, to be honest, because we felt like we almost had the yeah. whole piece. How did that happen? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, I think, yeah, how did that happen? I think the, it was really great to get this invitation of you guys and to receive the time also to do it. Because during the years, this, this piece has been quite popular with, mm -hmm. with schools and educations, and we've done a lot of restagings but then the time is rather limited we can come in for two weeks or three weeks mm. um plus so we had a lot of time that was one thing plus the other thing is that you you have very talented students <laughs> in the sense that they're they're very quick with catching up the, the rhythms in maybe another education it would take more time or or also the the level between people would would mm. uh, have a bigger difference i feel there is like a really strong base with the people that that you work with and the specificness of dog days lies also in the fact that the piece needs to be a challenge. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. If it's easy for the dancers, then the dog days are over. It doesn't work. Yeah. So I felt during, um, during the creation that we had a lot of time left and I could add on different things. Um, because the beauty of the piece lies in, in the fact that the dancers transform, mm -hmm. that they look all able and super fit in the beginning but that you know the sweat starts to come sometimes the movement is not as defined anymore because it's impossible to still have that same definition after absolutely 40 minutes and i think that's why this this length came about that that every time we do a restaging it, it needs to fall in a place where this transformation within the dancers is happening mm -hmm. and in your case it only started to happen after a big while and that's why it took so much time yeah it was um, great and it and, and it's funny how it seems you um you almost in like lots of choreographers when people make mistakes they uh they get impatient and etc well actually it's almost the piece is about that of course you prefer them not to make hundreds of mistakes but like the little little mistakes are the, almost the moments that you you look for yeah, indeed. I, I think indeed. And, and that's why there is this physical challenge, but there is also this in, intellectual or mm -hmm. intelligence uh, challenge as well. And the fact that we all have these measure changes and sometimes very unlogic uh, shifts from rhythm, from slow to, to faster to... Uh, because, yeah, as I felt, uh, this quote of Halsman was so important. I felt also the human of the dancer. Uh, dancer is actually quite a, a vain creature, there is this body cult as of wanting to have a good body on stage, to to not mis make mistakes, uh, to have this kind of perfectionist vibe, um, and I think also like yeah, with 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 allowing these mistakes to happen, not that we look for it, but indeed it's it it was a, a matter of constructing this piece in such a way that going through faultless would be quite impossible. Oh well, well, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think that's also really beautiful that, that even though they make mistakes, you still, as an audience, you're very much aware how fucking complicated this, yeah. this thing is and how, yeah. how an achievement it is to, to go through that. And I think also for an audience, you feel, at the end, you feel an uh, achievement mm -hmm. for them, but also for yourself to live it through with them. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then you seem to... Um, you seem to say that in this piece there is a political kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, aspect to it. Can you just very briefly um, say what, what you think about that? Yes, I think, I mean, it, it goes into different levels. I think maybe two things to say about it is that, um, is that when the piece was created, there were a lot of budget cuts in, in culture. Um, and I think in this neoliberal society where, uh, yeah, where, subvention for the arts is questioned again and again mm -hmm. um, and at spe especially at that time there was this uh, again this idea of uh, uh, the amount of subvention will be depending on how many seats you will fill in the theater so yes, the more true. accessible you will 
become, mm -hmm. the more uh, money you will get. Right. Yeah. And then I found an interesting question to see, okay, what is accessibility? And then what is entertainment? And what is the, art, uh, the difference between art and entertainment? So that were the questions coming there. And also for me, like, uh, yeah, what, what, what was entertainment? What is entertainment nowadays? And what was it ages ago, for example, mm -hmm. in the Roman times when people would go into the arena to see the gladiators kill each other? Kill each or, other, you know, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and feeling the parallel also with nowadays with reality TV, where we enjoy uh, people... Almost uh, destroying people on, uh, yeah, yes, on screen. Yeah. Or, yes, or people destroying their own relationships because mm -hmm. of participating in, in, in all these for different formats. So there is this kind of thing that somehow we as human beings um, enjoy seeing other people having it more difficult than us and i think that was also something that i wanted to 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 achieve on stage this feeling of of indeed of cruelty but at the same time people find it also funny and how is that uh how is that vibe um how is it going in the audience seats like when you're the person next to you is laughing while you think like oh my god this needs to stop <laughs> they need to stop jumping this is too cruel uh -huh. like um I, I find that a different uh, thing and the other thing political is that that for me it's it's a lot of my work is kind of what i would call like democratic choreography in in the sense that 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 um every dancer does the same there is not this typical hierarchy of a of a soloist or a mm. second soloist and a, a corps de ballet no every individual on stage bears the same responsibility and that's i think also something important that I find as a choreographer to to give as a message, which is not a clear message because you don't think about it. But on the other hand, all my productions are like this, is that they're everybody on stage bears the same responsibility to 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 mm. carry this to a, a good end. And there is not like a, a principle or. A, yeah. um, and of course, I think it's very good that that exists in the field. But I know that for for my work, I find it important to 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 not pinpoint already uh, to the audience look at this dancer mm -hmm. or or look at this one but to, to to allow that palette of different people of a variety of, of dancers and to make your own choices who you like and, and who you who you um, hang on to yep who you watch yeah yeah okay well great um I want to really thank you for taking the time to answer these questions and give you give us an insight into how you work and how you think. <laughs> great. No, great and for I'm, us. And I'm also really happy and grateful that you're retaking it and restaging it. Yeah, that's it's going to be fab. It's, yeah, so we're going to be doing that in June. And um, yeah, thanks, Jan Martens. <laughs>